Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a fun project that is not a quilt. We are going to make a rayon chenille scarf. This project is put together by a company called Sew Batik, and they make beautiful batiks, and this is a rayon batik. So everything we need, all the fabric we need, and the directions are all in this little packet. Now there are some special tools that the pattern suggests that you use. So let's open this up. So this says we are going to need, of course we need our rotary cutter, a ruler and our mat, and we're gonna need something called a chenille cutter. This is a special cutter. It's got a blade inside there, and there's different widths you can use with the blade to make different um, heights, I would say, of your chenille. Chenille is a technique used where you layer up fabric and you cut through some of the layers, and then you um, rough it up or wash it so that it has texture. A chenille brush, you could use that. I'm not going to because I'm going to wash the scarf. You're gonna need matching thread. And then if you have a walking foot, you can use that. I don't have a walking foot, so I'm just gonna do it with my regular sewing machine, but a walking foot would make it a little bit easier if you have one. The first thing we wanna do is iron this up. Now, this is rayon. Rayon is used a lot more in clothing, and you need to use your iron with a slightly lower temperature. The nice thing about rayon is it's a little more comfortable and it'll make the scarf feel better on our neck. So I'm gonna just iron out any folds and wrinkles that were in here from being packaged for so long. The next step is to fold this along its diagonal. So we've got kind of a triangle shape here. We're gonna take this over to the cutting surface and keep folding it till we've got it nice and flat. So the rayon, it's not as stiff as working with quilting cotton. And it's a little bit, it's not stretchy, but it, it moves and it, it's not as stable. So get it folded. Now we've got it, we've got a triangle here and a little bit extra. And now you can fold it again. So we're gonna fold this over like this. And what I'm trying to do is get it folded small enough so I can get it onto my cutting mat here. And I think it's small enough now. And I'm gonna just gently slide it over here. And I'm gonna try to square it up and pat it into place here till I get it nice and flat. And got it, I've got it parallel to a line here and parallel to a line on the bottom. Now I'm going to cut a strip here. I'm gonna cut one that's three inches wide, but it's folded, so my first strip is going to be six inches. This is going to be the base piece of our scarf. So I'm gonna open it up and lay it out flat on the table, and this is what's gonna be the center of the chenille. So we're gonna put some layers on the top of this and some layers on the bottom of this, and those layers will get cut, but this one will not. Now we need some five and a quarter inch strips, and I'm gonna fold this over, as long as I keep it folded parallel to the lines there, that will be fine. So I'm gonna cut five and a quarter inch strips with the rest of the fabric. So keep cutting all the way up till it's all into five and a quarter inch strips. Now we have all of these strips. They're all cut on the bias, and we're going to grab one. We're gonna grab kind of a long one. This is a long one here. And my, my batik does not have a right or a wrong side, so it doesn't matter which way I lay it out. But I'm going to put this strip on top of my big strip that I cut first, and I'm gonna put it about three quarters of an inch from the end here. So I'm keeping a little space there and I'm gonna line this up with the top edge here. So I'm just gonna keep smoothing it out and laying it down so these raw edges are all even. 
Now, the reason that these don't line up on both sides is because I cut this one a little bit wider. I cut it a little bit wider because it's really hard to cut it the exact amount you need when it's folded. So we will be trimming off this excess when we're done. Now we're gonna get a third strip and we're gonna lay it out the same way. So it's still, it's right on top of the second strip here. We're still leaving a little bit of that bottom strip showing. So we're gonna line this up exactly the same way with these raw edges even all the way along here. We're gonna add one more strip. Now you'll notice they're getting smaller as we go and that's okay, it doesn't have to be as long as the first one. So line this one up with these raw edges meeting again. Again, leaving about a half inch there. So now we have three strips added on top of our base strip. Now, since this one doesn't come all the way to the end, that's okay. We're gonna find another shorter piece here. Let's see if this one's long enough. Yes. So we are going to overlap this and we are gonna to wanna to put this piece on top. And the reason we wanna have this on top and not like that is because when we're done putting this together, we're gonna to use our cutter from this direction. So we want this piece to be on the bottom and this new piece on the top. Now we're gonna pin all our layers together here. The pattern does give you instructions for using glue or spray adhesive if you don't like to use pins. I don't mind the pins and I always have them handy, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pin all the way along both edges, both long edges. Now I'm gonna pin this long edge here and you'll notice my raw edges do not line up perfectly along this second edge and that's because the rayon, it's really hard to get it cut perfectly accurate. That's okay, we're gonna trim everything off when we're done. Now we need to flip the whole thing over straighten it back out and add some layers to this side of the of the base piece so we'll get another long piece and we'll line it up down at the end again about three quarters of an inch short from the very end and this time i'm going to line everything up with this bottom edge because that's the edge we lined up from the other side there's the last layer so i've got three layers on this side of the base and three layers on the other side. Now the pins that we put in, we're only going through the first half. So we need to take those out and then repin through all the layers. So just go along both sides. When you feel a pin there, take it out and repin through all the layers. Some of the ends were longer than others. So I'm gonna find the shortest one, which is this one right here and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line because that's going to be where our scarf is going to end. Let's move that pin. And I'm not gonna cut it yet, but I'm just going to draw a chalk line here so I know where to stop. Now we wanna draw a line right down the middle of the runner here. So I'm gonna measure over two and seven eighths inches because that's right in the middle. And I'm using a chalk pencil, and that works really well on this rayon. Now I'm also going to pin right along the center line every four or five inches or so. Now we're ready to start stitching. So we're going to stitch along that chalked line, but we need to back tack a big long back tack here because these are not all perfectly lined up and I want them all to be back tacked. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna go forward and back a couple of times. Then I'm just gonna stitch right along that drawn line. Now this is seven layers thick. So if you have a walking foot, that will help your machine go through this. Now where you have these overlaps, you just sew right over it. Don't worry about that at all. When you get to this chalk line that we drew, that's where you want to back tack. So stitch there and then back up. The next step is to sew again, 3 eighths of an inch away from this line. 
Now, I can do that on my machine. If you aren't confident with your 3 8 you can draw that again with your chalk pencil. That's up to you. So back tack this time also, and just keep stitching. So I'm gonna back tack each time I come to the end, and I'm just going to keep sewing these parallel lines, 3 eighths of an inch away, until I get to within about 3 eighths or a quarter inch from the edge here. So there's my last line. Now I got, let's see, I got six lines in, six beyond the center, I got six lines in, and that's about as close as I wanna to get to the edge here. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna flip it around, start from this end, and do the exact same thing over here. All the stitching is done. Now we want to trim this up. We want to trim the excess over here so that we have one quarter inch beyond our last line of stitching. So I'm just gonna take my plastic ruler and put the quarter inch line right on the stitching and then trim off that excess. So I'm just trimming away that extra there, all those different layers, and I'm gonna do this procedure on both sides of the scarf. After you have those sides trimmed up nice and neat, we're gonna trim one end a little bit. This end here, this is where we started pinning, so this middle layer is a little bit longer than the top and the bottom, and we need that to stay like that for when we put our chenille cutter in there. The far end here, it's got all these different lengths. So I'm just going to trim this off to about an inch below where that stitching stopped. So we're gonna neaten this up more later, but I just wanna get a lot of this extra stuff out of the way. Now we've got the scarf all prepared to use the chenille cutter. This is a really handy tool. So you can see the blade there, and then it's got this plastic guide, and that's gonna go under some of the layers of fabric and not others so that we won't cut everything. So let me show you how this works. This middle piece here, we're not gonna be cutting that. We're just gonna slide this under three layers of fabric here. And I'm gonna hold behind it, and I'm just going to slide or slash, hold it tight, and just go all the way down the channel. So just keep pulling and sliding this all the way down. Don't be in a hurry. And we are going to slice down every one of these channels. So we've got all these things cut here. So if you open this up a little bit, you can see the background fabric and you can see these three layers on top here. And once we get it all um, roughed up, this is gonna become our chenille part. But we also have to flip it over and we need to cut the channels on the backside too. If you have trouble getting the chenille cutter started cutting, you can snip with the scissors just a little bit there so that you have the cut started. Then you have more you can grab on behind here. Then it makes it easier to go. Now that all the channels have been cut with that chenille cutter, we're gonna trim off all of this excess to about a quarter inch beyond our stitching. Be sure you don't cut any of your stitching because that's got your back tacking and you want that to stay, you want that to stay there. So trim off all that extra stuff on both ends of the scarf here. Now, the last step is to slice through this very last layer here, about three inches up, and that way we can have fringe on the end of our scarf. The scarf is actually all done now, but we do need to make these chenille parts show up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into the washing machine. We're just gonna do it on the rinse cycle. All we have to do now is put it into the dryer and we're gonna put in a dryer sheet and an old towel because 
this is going to still lose some lint and the towel, the old towel will catch that lint. Here's the finished scarf. I'm really surprised at how nice that this came out. We've got the nice fringe on the end there. The colors are just fun. It's very fuzzy feeling, but it really didn't. Um, I thought there would be a lot of lint come off in the washer and dryer, but there really wasn't because it's cut on the bias. Now, this is just really nice store quality. So you could make a bunch of these and give them as gifts. It can be tied. It can just be thrown over the shoulders. This can go for almost any age. Just a lot of fun to make. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the chenille scarf. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to have another giveaway. We're going to give away this quilt here, and I'm going to put it out on the table so you can see the whole thing. Now, we made this in a tutorial. It's a pattern called Harvest, and this is a nice big twin size. It's got all sorts of leafy prints and acorns and pumpkins. Nice leaves on the back. So it's very easy to enter the giveaway. What we need is for you to put in your email address and your name. And that's all we need. Just click that link below where it says giveaway and you could be the lucky winner. Happy quilting.